Hello and welcome. This is going to be a quick run through for uh, installing Ubuntu server on VirtualBox. VirtualBox uh, is a virtualization software, which is software that allows you to run uh, guest operating systems right on your desktop. So uh, you can play around with things that might run on a Linux server uh, right on your desktop, even if you have, uh, say, a Windows or Macintosh machine. Um, and um, uh, without having to uh, uh, reformat your drive or repartition or do anything complicated. So um, a really good approach to uh, exploring new software, especially software that needs to be installed on a server. Uh, I'm going to assume that uh, a couple of things. First of all, um, uh, you need to have um, um, uh, VirtualBox installed. You can get that. Just go to uh, virtualbox.com or virtualbox.org, excuse me. Easy enough to install. Just go to the download page, uh, pick the package for your particular operating system, um, uh, download it, and then double click the package. Just take all the defaults. There's no reason that you need to really go through that. Um, so get that uh, downloaded and installed. And then the other thing you need is the Ubuntu server ISO. So go to ubuntu.com. And uh, Ubuntu.com, we're going to take a look at the server product. So click servers up here. Of course, these web pages change around, but I'm sure you can find it. Uh, go to the download Ubuntu server page. Be sure to check the alternative download options. Uh, expand that. Um, note that there's a couple of server versions available. Uh, one is the latest and greatest. The other is what they call a long-term support version. Uh, every once in a while, they kind of freeze the code on that and agree to support it with updates and patches for a long time. Um, so that's a good choice if you're looking for stable uh, maximum compatibility. Otherwise, the latest and greatest is a choice here. Take a look over on the right. Be sure to select the 32-bit version um, because you're going to be installing this in, in virtualization software. Uh, and um, even if you have 64-bit processor, you're still going to want the 32-bit version for this desktop virtualization project. Um, you can pick the 64-bit version if you're actually installing this on a physical server, but that's not really what you want. So go ahead and download the 32-bit version, uh, pick a location, uh, begin the download. It's a huge file, about 600 uh, megabytes, so it could take an hour or more depending on your, on your connection speed. Save it off on your desktop someplace. Uh, and you'll be all set to go. So um, we're going to start out here by creating a new virtual machine. Um, a wizard takes you through most of this. We're going to have to tweak a couple of the settings. Uh, but get the wizard started. Um, give it a name. I'm going to call this let me get a demo. And the reason for that is I'm going to actually install in a separate video after I'm done with this one. Uh, I'll record installing uh, uh, Omeka uh, virtual um, uh, digital repository software on here. Uh, but you give it a name. The only thing you can't do is you can't give it a name that you've already given something else. It doesn't like that much at all, so pick a new name if you've got other virtual machines going. Uh, select Linux for the operating system. Defaults to Ubuntu. Of course, there's a number of other flavors of Linux that you could pick, uh, but we're going through Ubuntu. Uh, 384 megabytes of memory is a good choice unless you know that the application is going to need more. Uh, I certainly wouldn't go less. We're going to create a new hard disk. Um, and it's not really going to create a new hard disk or do anything to your hard drive. It's just going to create a large file um, that it's going to call a virtual hard drive. Um, but it's just a big file on your computer. Um, so you need enough room. You need, you know, however much room you need. We're going to create one that could go up to eight gigab or eight, uh, yeah, eight gigabytes in size. So make sure you have the free space. Um, next button on the wizard. I'm going to recommend dynamically expanding storage. Um, uh, that uses only as much room as you actually need until you need more, and then it grows. Fixed size storage is a little bit um, peppier, uh, offers some performance advantages, but not much of a difference here for what we're going to do with it. Uh, so click Next. Um, defaults to 8 gigabytes uh, for a file size for this um, uh, virtual disk. Um, that's as good as any unless you know that you're going to need more. Um, there's no real advantage to um, uh, doing less. Um, you know, because we've got dynamically expanding storage. So, um, summarizes our options, um, summarizes them again. We're going to click finish. Uh, and now, before we actually get started, we're going to have to change a couple of things here. First of all, go to system. And I'm going to rearrange the boot order. I'm going to put um, uh, takeoff floppy, and I'm going to put uh, the hard disk first. 
and the CD-ROM second, um, so that once we get the operating system stalled, you don't have to worry about whether you've left a CD in the drive or not. Uh, and then I'm going to go to Processor, and I'm going to check this box, Enable PAE slash NX. And you need to do that for server products, because most server products, like Ubuntu Server, have a feature on there called PAE that um, allows it to access um, um, memory. Uh, so, let's go back here to CD DVD ROM. We're going to mount a CD drive, and what we're actually going to do is we're going to, um, we're going to mount that um, ISO file that we uh, um, downloaded. Um, now it's defaulting to this because I've, I've already got a couple of ISO images um, available to me. Uh, just click that envelope over there. If um, uh, you don't have any here, you just need to add them and then um, you know navigate over to wherever you downloaded that Ubuntu uh, um, ISO um, and click it. And um, it'll add it to this list and then you pick the ISO you want from this list. Uh, and then just take a quick look at um, network here. Uh, we're going to start with what we call network address translation. Um, and that's so we can get the machine up and initially running. We're going to come back and change this later to uh, bridged mode. Um, and so that means they're going to need to be able to get a DHCP address um, from whatever network you, you happen to be on. If, if you're on a typical home network uh, with one of these little wireless routers, mini routers, uh, you'll be fine. Um, only place you can sometimes run into issues is with um, you know work or university situations where you might have to register a MAC address and we won't know the MAC address until it's installed. So anyway, we're going to come back and change this later, but for now we're going to leave it at NAT. And I'm going to click OK. And now I think we're ready to go. So let's just click Start and we'll start the Ubuntu um, uh, installation process. Now it brings up a new window here and it starts the Ubuntu uh, installation process. Ubuntu actually installs pretty much the same way. You know, regardless of the versions, there are a few differences, so just pay attention to the prompts. Um, but for the most part, they're, um, uh, they're, the, they're the same across versions. First thing you need to do is actually capture the keyboard. Um, this is a, um, actually going to be a, a text environment, so there's not going to be any mouse in a minute. Um, so I'm going to uh, actually run my mouse over here and click inside the box, and that captures the keyboard now. If you want to release it, because um, now I don't have a mouse anymore, um, and you press the right control key, uh, and the right control key will release your mouse back to the system. So again, click in the box uh, to get your keyboard and focused on this particular installation screen. Pick your language. Uh, go ahead and install Ubuntu Server. The other thing you might do is you can check the disk for defects in case you had any uh, problems with your download. We don't have a disk, we have an ISO file. And you can check that to make sure it downloaded OK. Otherwise, just install Ubuntu Server. And I just pressed Enter here. And it's going to start us up. And of course, you're going to need to pick your language. Um, so I'm going to pick English. And I'm from the United States. Of course, you know, pick whichever you need to. I'm going to suggest you don't try to detect the keyboard layout. You probably know what kind of keyboard you've got. If you have a foreign keyboard, you don't know what it is. You might need to go through this routine. But just accept the no default here and press Enter. Uh, I have a USA keyboard and uh, the keyboard layout standard USA. And now we're going to um, uh, go through some hardware checks. Um, just going to start looking for some stuff. And I'll pause the recording until we get to the next interesting prompt. First thing you'll come to is a prompt for the host name. This is the name of your computer. <clears throat> uh, you can give it pretty much whatever you want. You gotta keep it simple, don't keep it too long. Um, uh, I'm going to call this one Omika. And press the tab key, that gets you the continue button. Um, I'm just going to set up a clock, do a few other things. I'm going to go ahead and pause again. Uh, next prompt that comes up is your time zone. Just arrow down to whatever time zone you're in and press enter. Just checking out hardware, doing a few other things. I'll pause again. Okay, now it's coming to a disk partition um, uh, process. You can just take the defaults on this. Um, uh, I'm going to actually um, go guided, use entire disk. Um, that's actually the probably the best choice here for this particular type of installation. 